Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to the Photo Show. Uh, we've got another Photoshop tutorial today and what we're going to look at today is how to make selections and cut images out from their background. Uh, now whether you're doing uh, compositing of images or whether you just want to change the background colour of an image, it's quite often that you'll want to cut something out, you know, a person or an object from the background. Um, one of the hardest areas to do with this is if you've got hair or fur or anything like that because the, the fine areas of it and the details are often quite uh, difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is show you through a technique here that um, enables you to uh, mask out and cut um, areas off of the background and keep a lot of the detail within the hair and stuff like that. So we've got this image here and we've got a couple of options. We could um, go and use something like the... Uh, quick selection tool which is W up on your um, palette here and if you start to drag that around you can see it start to select the area around the model here and as you can see we pull that down and that's given quite a good selection around the uh, models um, hair but you can see there's a lot of areas where it hasn't caught and there's, there's uh, inner parts. If I cut, if I just cut that out from that selection, so if I just invert the selection there so it's more round, and Control and J, you can see now when we turn off the background, it's left a lot of the blue area there. If we zoom in a little bit closer, it's quite a harsh selection all the way around. It hasn't done the best of jobs. So with an image like this, let's... Um, lose that layer for a start so what as you can see here because we've got um, the the girl is on a, a solid color background we can actually use that to our advantage and uh, use the color selection to cut her out from the background so if we come up here to select you've got an option here that says color range so we click that and that will bring up a dialog box here for us for the, the color range dialog box and you can see here in the box it's it's made some sort of selection but we have um, dro eyedroppers here which will help us select so we click the eyedropper tool bring it here and we'll select the blue and you can see now instantly it's selected everything in that image that was blue and left the girl as black so that's masking out the girl from the the background there you've got a thing called here called the fuzziness slider and the more you slide that up you can see the higher you go the more detail we're getting back into this area but w really what we want is a, a, a good contrast between the girl and the background so we'll bring the fuzziness slider back down until it's virtually solid black on the girl and solid white on the background so that's looking good there we'll click OK and you can see now that it's made a selection around uh, the girl, around the hair, and it's actually picking out a lot more detail. It's picking out the, the areas in between the hairs, all of the stuff that is actually uh, blue. Now we can improve on this. Um, let's add a quick mask. If you come below your color palette swatch here, there's a little symbol here, which is a circle with a dotted line in it. That's called your quick mask. If we click that, it'll actually show us the areas that are edited out. You can also toggle this by just pressing Q on your keyboard. So press Q, turn it off, press Q, turn it back on again. So now we've got the quick mask up. This is showing us the area that we've selected. And we can also now, if you come across to your palette at the top here and come to channels, you can see now that the quick mask area is selected. You've got your RGB, your red, your green, and your blue channels. And you've also got an additional channel. If I turn the quick mask off now, that's disappeared. If I turn it back on again, we have a quick mask channel. So if we just highlight the quick mask channel, we can now see exactly what we've got selected out. We can see that the background's fairly white and uh, the area of the model is uh, mainly black but you can see there are some areas here with a necklace and bits and pieces where it isn't quite as solid as it could be so what we can do we can actually adjust the mask to make it even better so if we run a levels adjustment on this quick mask layer so control and L to bring up the levels palette and if, if we now increase the whites to make sure that our background is as white as it can be and we'll bring the black 
slide it down to make it even more so. And you can see, but if we if we move the mid slider here, um, if you if you look in areas like this up here where there's some fine hair, as we move that, if we move it towards the white end, towards black, it's showing less detail. If we bring it in there, it's starting to show a bit more detail. So between the two, let's get it so we're getting a fair amount of detail. I'd say about there is good. And we'll click OK. And that's given us a really good mask. There's a, there's a couple of little spots in here. You can, if you want to, um, take a black brush and just fill those in. But I think we're going to leave that as it is now. So we'll press Q back on our keyboard. And we'll go back to the Layers palette now. So now we've got a selection around here. So let's invert that because we, what we've selected actually is the background rather than the girl. So we need to invert that. So if we do Shift, Control, and I, that's now made it so that we've picked out the model, not the background, and it's picked out a fair amount of the hair. Now if we hit Control and J, and we can now turn off the background, you can see now that we've got a really, really good looking cutout. We zoom in a little bit. There's some slight fringing here from some of the uh, hairs, but it's a lot better than it would have been. You can see there that we've actually managed to cut the model away from the background. And what we can do now is if we wanted to, let's add in uh, a blank layer there. Uh, and we can fill that with another color. So let's fill that in, edit, fill. and we'll pick a color. So let's uh, go for a hot pink. And you can see now how that we've changed the background color. And if we want to change that, if we hit Control and U to bring up our hue and saturation, we can now start to adjust that background change the colors as need be. More back to where we started really. Let's go with a green. Okay, let's bring it up to quite a vibrant green there. A bit of saturation. And because this is on a separate layer here we can also muck about. Let's do something like let's get a uh, brush up here. Add another layer in there. So we're going to lay in there. Let's get a brush. Let's make a nice big brush here, a big white brush. And if I paint here now, because we're on a separate layer, it's actually going to show up behind. There we go. And you can drop the opacity of that a little bit. Making it look like it's backlit as well. So basically, we've managed to cut the girl out from the background couple of options there to change the background color as well so let's just have a look where we started here that was where we started that's the straight cutout and there's our finished image so we managed to cut the girl out from the background keeping a lot of detail in the hair there there are other techniques where you can just fill in some of the fringing as well but that's the basic technique for cutting uh, difficult objects like hair and fur out from the background Hope that was useful. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments box below. I'm Dave Vickers. Thanks for watching. See you next time.